darlings, it's Mummy Sybil Brunson, and it's a bit of a cloudy Sunday. Uh, this wasn't the weather report, but this is what we've got. Um, and it's, you know, it's after Mother's Day, um, and we are, uh, the Sunday after Mother's Day, and we are struggling through. Some things are blooming. You can see rhododendrons there and azaleas and all sorts of different things. And um, so, and my neighbor's garden is doing very well. People are out walking their dogs and everything. So, um, I wanted to bring you to my garden because this is uh, the third day of cleanup in here. And you can see that some things have happened. No, they did not bloom from scratch, Alex. Some of you ask the silliest questions. And it's only because you're good-looking that Mummy continues to be your friend. You know something? When people are stupid but they're pretty, I think that they must be kept around because they are diverting and they are attractive. Um, but... but Yes, that does mean that some of you are pretty stupid, but that's a different subject for a different time. No, I bought some scaviolas um, or scavolas or scavolos or whatever you want to call them. They're usually tropical in Hawaiian. These are the purple plants, of course, that always attract the praying mantises at the end of the season. This one I is a little leggy. I put it in the urn. There's one back here, the other urn. Can you see it right there? That one's been all trimmed back. Yes, it's frightening when you when you look at this sort of thing because mummy cuts off all the nice purple flowers. But that means that for every cut I made, two branches will grow. And so mathematically, these should get very bushy as they do every year. All right, now, um, oh dear. I hate um, working in the garden and then, um, there, um, there, that's out of the way now. All right, back to my garden. All right, so these are bachelor buttons, sort of giant bachelor buttons. Here's a geranium in a pot. You know, geraniums are not my favorite flower any more than petunias are, but they're good fillers and they're, they're lovely annuals. Um, in that pot are some yarrows in the front that are struggling. No, mummy didn't throw them away and kill them. They're struggling, they're trying, and mummy will try. All right, so there, um, there's some yarrows that are doing better along with uh, gay feathers or liatris, um, but gay feathers, and so they're the tall purpley and white flowers that are great. All right, here's another geranium. Here's a little bit of um, maiden's tears or bladderwort, which is a weed, but it's so attractive and it's, a, it's sort of a, a Gaelic um, ground cover, which came into my garden years ago as a weed. And there's a whole pot of it, which as many of you who follow me know, I've kept nurturing and nurturing and now it, de it deserves its own pot. All right, look what mummy got. This pot was with um, euphorbias and all sorts of different things over the ageratums. And... But the perennials all died in this pot. Oh, knock wood, knock wood. Oh dear, knock wood. There, I'm knocking wood right there with my, oh, these are my um, gloves. Yes, they're not opera gloves, but they're gardening gloves. Um, I bought yesterday from Bob Conlon a bonsai lavender. That is a lavender that has just sort of grown wild and crazy and is on its own. Let me remove the towel. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? And mummy will train it. And it's, um, well, it's kind of my new, well, I shouldn't say it too loud. Plants are very sensitive. It's kind of my favorite plant right now. And it's kind of a pet. And I shall take very good care of it. Next to it are lavenders in the back there. You see those two? They suffered this year. I don't know what happened, but Mummy's going to try and bring them back and, and get them up and running. Um, they're a different lavender. And here in the front is a yarrow that's trying to come back. This is the, uh, the, the what did we call this last year? It was like the, the graveyard section. It was the section of the dead um, because of these trees that throw shade. Uh, suddenly, what happened over here... Um, the, 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 the lost garden uh, became a jungle of uh, coleus and uh, geraniums and, um, uh, oh yes, of course, New Guinean patients. This was a riot of white and green and pink and was absolutely beautiful. And that's what it's going to be again. And I'm going to get that up and running. Uh, there's my hookera. So this side of the garden is done. All right. And this is what I managed to get done yesterday. The perennials are, are being nurtured. The annuals are put in to fill in the blank spaces. I haven't made all my decisions yet. But what I did want to show you all, because you keep saying, Mummy, what do you mean by your groove thang? Mummy does her groove thang. Well, here's my groove thang. And I shall actually show you. All right. So look at what the garden looks like. Look at all that crap. That's what the garden looks like. Look around the pots. Look. A catastrophe, darling. My goodness, it looks like Uncle Henry and Aunt Em's farm after the tornado is all in there. I mean, I, there's Elvira, Elmira Gulch. She's lying there face down. Anyway, 
And by the way, it's Elmira Gulch. Elmira Gulch. Anyway, so there's the leaves and everything. All right, now if you look between the cracks here, you're going to see... Well, Mummy already grooved these. Let's go over here. I know where you can see it really well. This, see, I've already started to clean these. Ah, look over here. See, this is going to be all immaculate in another week, but Mummy has to get back to the city. This will be immaculate. Do you see this garbage area? Look at this. Okay, do you see all the crap between the boards? Okay, watch what I do. You take a dandelion weeder. You recognize this? There you go. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get the camera working. And you put it through and then you slide it through. Now, I'm trying to do both things. All right, do you see? You put it through, there it is, and then you slide it through, all right? And when you do that, you slide all the crap down. Here's another one right here. All right, watch, I'll try to do both. Okay, and there you go. And you see, it all falls down in between the boards. Now, a couple of rules. First of all, stick to one area. Do an area and get it all done. All the boards, all the grooves from one end to the other, right? And do it on a day when the decks have been dry for a day or two. Do not do this after you've been watering your plants or it's been raining or whatever. All of that crap between the grooves will stick and be impossible to move. But if it's all dried out, that stuff will slide, slide right down into the under area under your deck. And what happens is this. You do a couple of things. First of all, your boards will all dry out between rainings and plant waterings and water sprinklings and whatever. Every spring, do this at the beginning of the season. So, what will happen is all of this stuff which traps water and mold and fungus and bugs will fall through to the bottom underneath, okay? That means that not only do the boards dry out, but the underneath area, when it gets rainy and everything, dries out also. So there's not as much mold and mildew and fungus and mushrooms and especially mosquitoes and unwanted insects under your deck. Your boards will dry out and last 10 times longer. Your underneath area will stay freer of insects and mold and, and termites and mosquitoes. And it's very subtle, but darlings, look at this. See, even if I swept all this up, you would say, oh, it's very attractive and it's well swept. But the stuff between the boards, even though a lot of people don't recognize it right away, that is clutter. It looks sloppy. When I have done the dandelion weeder groove thang on my boards, people come to my deck and when it's all swept and everything, they say, my goodness, your deck looks so sharp. Never realizing that what they're seeing is all of those black grooves between the boards are clean. They're free of debris and it just seems to be crisper. It's like people that iron their sheets <laughs> before they make the bed. I'm not suggesting you be that anal, but the bottom line is, is that those sharp lines look between the pots. Do you see it? It's, it's subtle but it is definite. All that area cleaned up against the wall, all of those spaces, all of that is cleaner and fresher than that, than that. And you clean out those grooves, you sweep up everything, and you'll be amazed at how much sharper and handsomer your garden will be, okay? All right, last thing I'm gonna do, and then I will let you go, because I know you don't wanna be all day in the garden with me. This is, um, these pots are, this is what these pots look like when I come out. So some of the perennials come up and some of them uh, don't. But the bottom line is this. There's all of this stuff in there. So the first step is to, when you're, when you're looking at this, you can't get discouraged. So when you're gardening, whether it's in a flower bed or it's in a pot, you simply start grabbing all this debris. And if the first thing you do, and the only thing you do in one day, is to pick up the debris and throw it in the wastebasket, you're off to a good start. Then you take, I know my camera work is awful today. You take little needle nose pointy scissors like these and you begin to snip away what I call 
the hair. You give your plants a haircut. Now, if you've done it in the fall, you'll have less to pick out um, because you'll have trimmed everything to the ground. But if you haven't done that in the late fall, and you should do it in the extremely late fall, um, to give the plants the maximum amount of time in the sun and warm weather. But if you haven't done it like in late in October, early November, and you have to do it now, then carefully take hold of things and you scissor them out, you comb them out gently, and then you start scissoring them out. Now, Mummy, when she was a gardener at a very young age, um, I, I liked doing my gardening by myself. I didn't like my parents, who I've described to you in detail over the years, um, to come out and, and annoy me. So <laughs> I, used to, I used to come up with stories and I would say, well, I'm going to the garden, but I want to warn you, the witch's hair is everywhere. And um, I, well, I'm, I'm admitting it now because my parents are dead. Um, well, I had to kill them, but that's another story for another time. Um, the what I did was I would describe all of this stuff as witch's hair. And they would say, what What does that mean? And I said, well, in the Middle Ages, um, all the people back then, the herbologists and midwives and gardeners and, and farmers would say that all of this stuff was evidence that witches had been there and that this was witch's hair and that witches had died on the ground on the grounds or in the, on the, in the farm or in the field or whatever, or in the woods. And this was their hair that was left behind. And my mother and father would look at me. Their eyes would be saucers. These were highly educated people, and yet they were given to notions. And they would say, oh, my goodness, that's a horrible thing. Even if it's not true, it's still, it, it's horrible. I, I don't want to be in the garden. I said, oh, and yes, when they used to burn witches, they would throw their ashes in the woods, and then this would show up the next spring, and it would be witches' hair because they had killed witches. And so, um, and my mother was, oh, my goodness, that's even more horrible. It's not, it's not really witches' hair, but still, it's a very sad story, and it's very bad karma, and I don't want to be there. And um, so I said, well, then I will go out and do all my gardening by myself without you, and you can come when the garden is pretty and more groomed like this. And they said that's fine. And my mother, who always liked to threaten me, closed the conversation by saying, well, Sybil, if that's the kind of girl you want to be and you want to go out and be in such a negative space or such a frightening and forbidding environment, then you go ahead. But we're not going to be dragged into it just because you like it. And um, so that's how that is. We're not going to go out there and help you in the garden. You're going to have to do it yourself. And that's if that's the kind of girl you are, then that's how you're going to have to live. And I hope you're very happy with your gardening out there, with your witch's hair and your um, toadstools and your millipedes and whatever you go ahead and you go do that young lady and um your father and i want no part of it nor do any of your siblings and i know that dagmar your identical twin will have none of it none of it at all you understand i was five years of age at the time i was five years old well i certainly went out and i gardened by myself except when my beloved grandmother would come and help me um and she hated her daughter anyway. But that's another story. Anyway, so that's what I call this. And this witch's hair, once you scissor it all out, okay, look at it. Can you see? All this stuff, when you carefully scissor it out, don't cut the new growth, but just keep taking those needle nose scissors and needling it out. Needle out these twigs. You, you carefully push the things aside. It takes some effort, but when you're done, when you're done, this, for instance, is what it looks like. Now look at that Liatra spot. Those are gay feathers, and so are those. You see, this one still has to be done. This one still has to be done. But you can see, I mean, I've been, all of that witch's hair was in there. All of that witch's hair was in all of these. And I have been carefully scissoring it out, pulling it out without damaging the new shoots. Okay, so there's your lesson for today. I hope you um, got something out of that. And um, so I hope you're... You're edified a little bit. Uh, one last thing about chores in the garden. It's like chores anywhere. Don't skip around doing uh, three minutes here and three minutes there and five minutes there and six minutes over there. Don't do that. Don't groove thang here for a foot and then come over here and do two feet over here and skip around. Because all those C minus jobs that you just did give you no sense of accomplishment. You won't feel like you've accomplished anything if you put five minutes um, in... 80 different parts of the garden and then at the end of the day it looks like nothing happened get one pot done get one little corner of a flower bed done groove thang one whole section and get it done here's the shower stall all done the exterior showers all done yes the wood is weathered and etc etc but oops there's a holly leaf that blew in there but still all of those grooves are done over here look 
This place is always a mess. All done. All done. So get things done in sections and complete them. And then you'll feel that you've actually accomplished something by the afternoon. Even if all you get is one pot done or one, uh, you know, 10 by 10 square foot area of the, of the deck done, or whatever. Finish it and be done. And, and then don't do an eight-hour day in the garden like Mummy did yesterday or she is today. You won't do an eight-hour day, but even if you do one hour, you'll look at it and you go, now that's finished and lovely, okay? So for t- instance today, I'm not going to finish all this garden today, but I am going to get all those giant sticks out of there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of the witch's hair and all the sticks. I'm going to get those things. I'm going to get that corner swept and done and that'll be lovely okay all right this is the longest tourette i've ever done but i hope you um got something out of it and i hope my camera work must have been making many of you seasick but that's just the way it goes i i don't have a gimbal yet and i don't have a cameraman so even if i didn't have a cameraman a gimbal would have made it so much easier all right so there you go all right love you all i'll talk to you later and um back to work back to work my dears oh my dear my dear dear. oh it looks like it's going to rain Well, I'll just put on my bikini um, and hide behind the gate. I'll close the gate so I don't frighten the dogs or the children. Um, And so Olivia Benson um, and Elliot Stabler don't come over here and tell me that I've been molesting children by appearing in um, a a, a bikini as a a giant bag of aging tapioca in a string bikini. (laughs) Such an... Oh, my goodness, I almost made myself sick to my stomach. Oh, well, talk to you all later. Love you, darlings. Bye-bye.